Hey guys and girls, welcome to lesson one of this Cubase Electro tutorial. I am John Merritt from borntoproduce.com. So for those of you watching the first three or four videos on YouTube, here is a little clip of the track that we're gonna make in this tutorial so you know what you're getting yourself into. So that's obviously a very short example. The final track is like four or five minutes long and you'll be learning how to make this track, which sounds very complex with all the twisty wonkiness, um, all the different bass line chops. You'll be learning about vocals in a basic way, or at least for electro sort of music, the arrangement, breakdowns, buildups, tension and release, layering, so much more. If you wanna hear the full track, you can always watch the course overview video. The full track is at the end of that, and that's at the top of the products page, which is the first link in the description below on YouTube. So let's start making some wonky, twisty goodness. We wanna start fresh from nothing and build the track up all the way to the final mix down. So we're gonna start with a blank project. So we're gonna click on prompt for project location, create empty. It's gonna ask me where I want to save this. I'm just gonna create a folder on my desktop. You can create the folder wherever you want and express yourself as the name of the track. So that's what I'm going to call it. So just select that, select folder. Now that has set up the projects folder, but it hasn't actually set up a project uh, file itself. So we just go to file, uh, save as, and that will automatically bring Bring you to the folder that you just created. I'm just going to call the actual project, express yourself, hit enter, and then we've actually got our project file as well. And very, very quickly, we go to studio, just check our settings, and just under VST audio system, check what sound card you got. If you've got a dedicated sound card, you select that here. If you haven't, select generic low latency ASIO driver. That's basically all you need there. Then we go to project, project setup. The project length, usually, I think by default, it's like one hour or something. You just set it to like six minutes or something otherwise it's just going to be a bit of a pain when you're scrolling through it later on so six minutes is absolutely fine and then the sample rate and everything well i've kind of talked about this briefly already so i'm not going to go into much detail i've already explained why we're using a higher sample rate for this you do not have to at all if you want and your computer's maybe not up to scratch or something like that or it's just a little bit slower on your laptop that's not very powerful then just select 44.1 it's absolutely fine you're not going to notice any like really bad degradation the bit depth now we're going to work at 24 bit but really the bit depth is actually kind of pointless unless you're recording anything um we're only recording a very quick vocal sample later on and having a higher bit depth isn't really going to make a huge amount of difference but as we're working at 96 kilohertz i'm going to work at 24 bit as well but if you want to work at 16 bit that's absolutely fine really it's not going to affect your project okay that's enough of that so as this is a sort of more advanced tutorial i'm going to be sort of just assuming you know uh, the basic basics of Cubase, like how to zoom in and out, how to load samples, all that sort of thing, how to navigate around the different zones in Cubase. I may touch on some of these things, but we are going to sort of be advancing on as quickly as possible because I don't want to get too hung up on all the sort of beginner uh, or very basic beginner level stuff. So if you are a complete beginner to Cubase, you've never used it before, then please check out our Ultimate Beginners course as this will cover all of the basic fundamentals of Cubase. If you are watching this video on YouTube, I'm going to link to that course in the description. Just go to the product page and a little bit further down, you'll see the first four lessons there, which you can watch for completely free, which are gonna get you started on the right foot. So we just want our right-hand zone activated. We're gonna to go to media. We're gonna load some samples. We're not gonna use any of the Cubase samples. We're actually gonna use some of the samples from our brand new Born to Produce Club Tools 1 sample pack, which at the time of recording this tutorial is actually still under construction, but it will be complete and out before this tutorial is released. Now, as with all of our tutorials, you don't actually need that sample pack to complete the tutorial. Obviously, all of the samples that we use will be included in the work file. So in order to get to that, just go to the file browser uh, and you're going to have to navigate to wherever you've got the work files on your computer, wherever the video files are, they'll be in the same folder. So at the moment, I'm in the Born to Produce Club Tools 1 and I'm just in the Kicks folder. And now this will have many, many more kicks in by the time this tutorial is actually released. Like I say, this is still a work in progress. Uh, now I just want a nice punchy electro kick and kick 12 is sort of fitting the bill for that so i'm just going to right click go create a sampler track now i'm going to start from bar five so i'm just going to draw in a midi segment and i'll set my loop region as well by coming up to the very top there and just dragging that along and of course to activate the loop region i just click on the activate cycle button either on the top transport panel which you can get to by hitting f2 and that means it's a floating panel so you can just move it around 
or you've got the transport panel on the bottom of the projects window which you can turn on or off by coming up to setup window layout and activating or deactivating the transport panel and of course the first thing we want to do when we've loaded in our kick now the kick is obviously the sort of loudest thing in the project so we're going to turn that down this is like sort of preemptive gain staging if you like anywhere between sort of minus 12 and minus 10 is absolutely fine this just means that as we add more things to the project uh, nothing's going to get too loud and it's not going to sort of overload our master out channel so we're all set up and we just need to start drawing in our kick now at the moment obviously when we load our sampler track it automatically brings up the lower zone with the sample you can see here we can change these starts and end points of the sample um, or the fade in or fade out at the end there and you can obviously shorten that sample right down if you want or of course have it at its full length which is what we're gonna use it as a note as well on the keyboard down here of course we've made a sampler track so this is now like a playable instrument so we can pitch this or down if, as we want. Now C3 as indicated by the dark blue note indicates that that is the sort of root note. So if I play it, that's playing at its natural pitch. If I play it on any other key, it's either playing it pitched up or it's playing it pitched down. So obviously I want to have the kick playing in my project. So I just got to double click on the MIDI. Now this, as you can see, is coming up in a separate window. If you're clicking on this and it comes up it appears in the editor pane down here in the lower zone that's absolutely fine you can of course use this window to draw in midi just as you would in a separate window but if you're like me and you want it to always appear in a separate window when you double click the midi like this uh, rather than appear in the lower zone just go to edit preferences and then under editors just change this from double click opens editor in low zone to double click opens editor in a window and just click apply. So now we're in here, gonna just draw in my MIDI, just one on every single beat. And there we go, we got our nice four by four kick pattern. Uh, it's a bit slow at the moment, we're gonna want this at a different tempo. So either in the separate transport panel, the F2 transport panel, or in the lower zone in the project window, you can change this. And we're gonna go with 128 BPM, which is more sort of electro speed. And we can close that. And then in our project window, just as a last sort of thing to set up, and that is at the moment we've got it set to grid, and then it's on bar. We don't wanna use bar. It always comes as default as bar. It's really kind of annoying. It should just come as something which is a bit more useful, but there we go. Um, I'm gonna change that to adapt to zoom. It just means that as we zoom in and out, it automatically changes the sort of quantize or the snap settings, depending on how far in or out we are zoomed in or out. Yeah, I make sense. And of course, very quickly, just the zoom settings. So there's various different ways you can zoom in and out. You can actually just click up on the timeline here in the timeline and just go up or down to zoom in or out. So you can click anywhere, doesn't matter. Or you can use the zoom controls here, the slider. So you can either click and drag that with the mouse or you can just hover over it and use your mouse wheel. Or you can use G and H on your keyboard to zoom in and out. And then vertically, if you want to, you can zoom in and out as well. And exactly the same applies for the editor window, whether it's in the lower zone or whether it's in a separate window, it makes no difference. Still got the vertical zoom and horizontal zoom functions as well. Okay, so we've got our kick. So let's start making this sound a bit more like a house beat. So let's get in our clap as well. So I'm gonna code a claps <laughs> at the moment. Obviously in a club tools one, we've got one clap, one single singular clap yay obviously there'll be way way more than that in the final sample bank as i said this is a work in progress so i'm just gonna have clap 01 and create sampler track now i'm gonna kind of cheat and i'm just gonna copy the midi from the kick double click it to go into it and all i'm gonna do because we want the clap always to fall on the second and fourth beat so i'm just gonna come in and delete the one on the first and third beat and also again, obviously we've turned down our kick, so we're gonna to need to turn down everything else that comes into the project as well. And there we go. Rocking a house beat, oh yeah. And then of course we want our hat as well, which is a super important part of any house beat. So we're gonna to go to hats, we're gonna to go to open hats, and we want open hat 11 for now. We can always change these later on if we want to. We're gonna right click and create sample track. Now again, I'm gonna copy the MIDI from the kick. Now don't worry that these are all labeled the same. We're gonna change that in just a second, but it's just a nice and easy way of getting the hat pattern in. So we're gonna 
open that up, highlight all of them and just move them along. So they're now on the off beat. That's exactly halfway in between each beat and turn it down and let's have a play. Nice and simple. Okay, so that's our basic beat. Now very quickly, let's just make sure these are all named correctly. So in order to do that, it's very simple. I'm just gonna double click on the name in the channel settings. And it doesn't matter if it's highlighted, you're just gonna hold shift and hit enter. And you'll see that the name of the actual MIDI segment changes as well. So I'm gonna do that for the hat as well. So shift and enter, and then it's all labeled accordingly. So one last thing that I want to do is sort of just funk this up just a little bit. So in order to do that, I'm gonna find a closed hat That sounds about right. So let's use closed hat 10. I'm gonna again, create a sampler track. I'm just gonna draw this one in. No probs, double click to go into it. Now what we wanna do is add a bit of movement to this beat. So it's not just a standard, just well this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our quantize within the key editor window to 164th. So you can see obviously it's dissected the beats up in or well, one bar into 64 different segments. And we're just going to obviously staying on C3, which we know is the root note of our hat. And we're gonna come in and draw one, which is on the second beat, but three sixty-fourths from the end. Let's just play that. And obviously I need to turn it down, but this is good to show uh, exactly how it sounds. And then we're also gonna do one here. So obviously where these sort of very small, uh, very slight lines are here, here and here, they're all sort of sixteenths of the bar. Now we are going to on the 16th, but we're moving it one off. So we're giving this a bit of swing basically. And I'm just gonna copy that across. So we've got one there. So obviously that would be on a 16th and we just drag that one across. And that would also be on a 16th there, but we've just dragged it one across. So let's just quickly play that. And you can hear it just sort of funks up. Now, if that was on a 16th, let's just play that. which is fine, but having it with a bit of swing just gives it a bit more funk. And obviously we need to go and turn it down quite a lot. So let's do that. Okay, so that's pretty much the drum beat done. Obviously we need to be adding reverb and all that sort of thing, but we're gonna to get to that a bit later. One very last thing that I do want to do is just add a maximizer to our master channel out. And that's just because everything's very quiet at the moment, uh, which is absolutely fine for the exact reasons that I said before. Uh, we don't want to have it peaking on the master out. So uh, if we go to our mixer in the lower zone, so if we click down here, just obviously make sure your lower zone is actually showing. And then we can see here our different channels. So we've got our kick, clap, open hat, close hat, and our stereo out. This is what we're talking about. And that's a good amount of headroom at the moment. All right, if we go to our insert section, and I'm just gonna stick a maximizer on this. So we just go to dynamics, go to maximizer. And all this does, it's basically a, a limiter with particular settings. So it's not actually going to change the sound of anything. It's just gonna give it a bit of a boost. And it's also gonna stop, if it ever does get to the point where it's peaking, the track is like so loud that it's peaking, it shouldn't do, but if it does, then it's also gonna stop any sort of nasty clicks or sorry, uh, digital distortion from happening on the master out. So we're just gonna leave that on there. It's just gonna increase the volume just slightly as well. We go back to the fader window. That's fine, we've got plenty of headroom at the moment and we can always dial that back if we want to later on. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're gonna talk about how to create that sort of really complex bass sounds or the chopped up sounds and everything like that. And we're gonna go through the theory basically of how you go about doing that. And it doesn't matter what genre you're in, it could be dubstep, it could be electro, it could be anything, the same principles will apply. So it's really important to understand that. So that's what we're gonna cover in the next lesson. I hope that was helpful for you. Thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you loved it, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.